Thank you for joining us for this video lesson. Three free ways to get coaching clients. If you're ready, let's get started. First, if you could for us, we'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button if you're watching this on our YouTube channel. And also subscribe because we have hundreds and hundreds of videos, not only for business and careers, but for training and coaching techniques and science and so much more. So if you're watching this on one of our blogs or a different social platform, just go over to YouTube and search Nesta Spencer Institute channel and subscribe and be sure to like the video. Thank you so much. All right, here we go. Here are your three ways to get more coaching clients for free. This is important to remember. Not every marketing strategy to get more coaching clients has to be expensive. Many are low cost or no cost and just require a little effort and creativity. Here's the first one. And there's a few parts to this, so we're going to break it down slowly. You can interview your successful client on a Facebook Live video. Then you can use that video on YouTube and your blog and other areas as well. So let's get into this. Here's how to make it work for you. First, it's important to know that not everyone, not every client is going to be the right person for this marketing strategy. Some people will refuse and others just aren't dynamic on video. They might be shy, they might be concerned about how they sound or how they look or they don't have the right tech or they don't have the time and opportunity. So there are other people that will do a better job for you. And maybe they didn't quite get the results you wanted because they didn't give the effort. Sometimes that happens. Not everyone is going to win at the highest level. It's just the way it is. So choose the person for this carefully. Make the video conversational, fun, lighthearted, and informative. So are you starting to think about which client you currently have, who would be a good candidate for this? Before you begin the live video, you will want to go over the types of questions you will ask your successful client. You will also want to go over questions with your client that they don't want asked. There might be something that's too personal or maybe you're doing some type of success coaching uh, with the person and they don't want to go over specific financials. Maybe you're doing more uh, weight loss uh, consulting or coaching or lifestyle and they don't want to talk about how many pounds of body fat they lost or the percent body fat, but you can speak in generalities. You need to work that out in advance. Interview your successful clients on Facebook Live, but then utilize it in different ways. So here we go. Well, first of all, let's talk about this. Why do a live video and not recorded. Have you thought about that? Why do it live? Why does that matter? It's simple. It's human psychology. Anything live feels more like an event. It feels special instead of just a video. It appears to be more exciting to the viewer. This gives you more eyeballs on your video and more people to watch and hear and respond to your message. Well, what else can you do with that video? Anytime you do one thing for your business, you always want to ask yourself, what else can I do? How else can I leverage this? How else can I utilize this? I worked once. How many times can I benefit from this single effort? You should always ask yourself that question. You can download the live video to your computer. And by the way, just you can do a Google search. How do I download a video from Facebook and in the FAQs and the search help on Facebook, it will have information as well. So you can download the live video to your computer and then utilize it for other things. You can also embed the code for the video on Facebook on your blog. You can uh, get that code. It's very simple and it's very easy to add to a blog. So, and if you don't know how to do it, anyone who does your web development will know how to do it. So it's not a requirement, but it's an option and you want to utilize it as many places as possible. You can re-upload that video and put it on YouTube. So you can utilize that content on both platforms. You'll want to make a clear 
definitive, detailed, and optimized title and description of this video so it gets picked up in the search algorithm for Facebook and also when you re-upload it to YouTube. And if you like, you can use the embed code from YouTube instead of Facebook on your blog. And it's totally up to you. You can also find a gig on Fiverr, which I'll explain here in just a second, that will transcribe the audio of your video interview. So let's just talk about this for a second. First of all, you, you may or may not know what Fiverr is. It's Fiverr.com, and you can see they're highlighted in yellow. This started out as a part of the gig economy. It's been around for many years now. And every gig or side hustle or task that someone would do for you originally started out at just $5, like a fiver. And that's how the name got started. And obviously now some things are a lot more expensive. But you can get this transcribed very, very simplistically for a very low fee. And that way you can take that and clean up, you'll clean it up a little bit and edit it and format it a little bit after it's transcribed. It's not going to be perfect, but it'd be pretty good. But you know what was said. Go back, clean it up, and then use that as blog content for your website, for your blog. And then on that same page, you can embed the video of that text. Why would you want to do that? because search engines see text better than video, although they're getting better about it all the time. When you embed a video from Facebook, but even more so specifically YouTube, because Google owns YouTube. So if you embed this video from YouTube on your blog with the transcribed communication of the video interview, it doubles, it compounds the effect of search optimization when you properly tag and title and describe it and link it properly. That's a video for another day. You also, I, I would love if you would communicate uh, through our contact page of Spencer Institute or Nesta and let us know what you'd like to learn and we'll make a video based on your requests. So let us know, but we're always here to help you grow your business in a lot of different ways. All right. So, uh, and also, if you have a podcast, you may decide to upload the audio version uh, as a special podcast episode. You can, what, what the, the term is called rip the audio, and which would be an MP3 format. So you can separate the audio from the video file. Now you have an MP3 of that interview, and that can be a podcast episode. And there's other places you can upload that as well, aside from you know, an iTunes account or Stitcher or SoundCloud or whatever it is that you're using. There's a lot of different ways. How many times can you leverage this interview with your successful client? So that was number one. Now we're moving on to number two, the case study. Use a highly motivated and appropriate client as a case study, just like the interview. You want someone who has a great story to tell, that is likable, that got desirable results, and has an, an interesting angle, and also agrees to be a participant in this case study. A case study is essentially a well, I'm sorry, a real world example of what can be accomplished with your coaching program. There are times when you can negotiate with your new client in advance about his or her participation in the case study. Some coaches just have it in their documentation, in their agreement that says your results may be part of a case study. Some people don't like that. But also, you don't want to do a case study with everyone because not everyone is going to be an ideal case study. That's wishful thinking that everyone will be a great case study. The reality is not everyone will but that you'll have a few standouts that really are representative of your work and also make a great case for a potential client to sign up with you so they can have a similar result as the person featured in the case study. You may say something similar to this to the potential client you want to do the case study. You can say, quote, I believe you have great potential and will be an inspiration to my future clients. 
I'm willing to do a 20% reduction in my coaching fee if you agree to allow me to document, organize, and share your journey through the coaching system in addition to your new successes. Now, a lot of people are going to say, absolutely not. And a lot of people will say, absolutely yes, because they're proud of their accomplishments as well. What you may do is seed the idea from the beginning of your coaching relationship and say, you know, an, an opportunity here is to uh, have this all featured and documented and shared with other people. And we can talk about that. And then you can negotiate uh, a special price. And sometimes you don't have to negotiate a special price. I'm just giving you options, but you don't always have to do that. Some people are willing to do it without any reduction. And in fact, some people would say, don't ever reduce it no matter what. And all those things are true. It just depends on the situation. After the client agrees in writing, because you want to have it documented, that it's okay with him or her to share the information in the case study with others. It needs to be in writing. It can be uh, uh, formalized through email communication and documented because it's time stamped and so forth. But you'll want to formalize it in some way in writing. And also, some people would argue that you want it in some sort of um, legal document in addition to the email. But make sure it's documented. That's very important. You want to do you would want to document all aspects of the sessions and the progress in a way that can be most easily presented to others on social media, on your blog, as an example of what's possible with you as their coach. Take photos, use video, take measurements, use data to show progress, lab reports, accounting, Google metrics, etc. Depends on what you're coaching them on and what you're measuring and what is the desired outcome. That's the data that you're going to share, the before and the after. Use whatever third party uh, points of measurement that make sense. What makes sense to measure to show progress? Document all of that. And that's what you will share and present to other people as part of the case study as well. Show the journey and the results. That's called the reveal. So if you've ever seen a, a reality show, which I'm sure you have, or some sort of before and after, body makeover, house makeover, redo the backyard, some sort of transformation, makeover, before and after, you know, whatever it is, person, place, or thing, or car restoration, or whatever. The end of it is called the reveal. You need to have the reveal. The reveal is showing, like you pull the curtain back. You know, ta-da, here is Joe Schmo or Jane Doe or whoever it is. And this is what they've accomplished. And here are the different ways that we've measured it all. So here's a graphic that will make it. Uh, easy for you to understand. You know, what evidence are you providing for the person watching or reading or learning about this case study? What evidence are you going to provide them that shows that the person started at point A and finished at point B? And uh, talk a little bit about the subject. The subject is Joe Schmo. And Joe Schmo is 42 years old and he's married and he's a, a C suite executive. And uh, if it matters, he makes X number of dollars uh, per year. Or if it matters, his body fat was uh, 20%. And if it matters, his blood pressure was uh, 150 over 85. Uh, and if it matters, his total cholesterol was uh, 225. And if it matters, his height is uh, five foot nine and a half. Whatever information you need. You, and that's part of the data as well. What knowledge are you going to share with them also? Uh, what knowledge did you need to learn from Joe Schmo? And what knowledge would you want the person that's reading the case study to know about what Joe Schmo's journey has been? And then what data are you collecting? If you're helping someone build their business, if you're a business coach, uh, you know, are there um, Google Analytics that you're looking at? The data from a, um, a VO2 max test uh, or a submaximal uh, effort test. Uh, maybe it is uh, some sort of uh, flexibility test. What data are you showing? You need to have it organized and needs to be easily understood. 
And what research that did you do to help come to these conclusions? Whatever research you can share, and there'll be a lot of things that come up along the way, and the type of research and the kind of data is going to depend on the type of coaching client you're working with. Are you doing sleep science? Are you doing brain fitness? You know, what data can they remember 27 names instead of 22? Um, and, uh, you know, just think about the different types of coaching that you can do. What is a point of reference to show a tangible, measurable change? What methods did you use? And what was the criteria uh, for this? You know, it had to be a male. It had to be a female. It had to be someone who was postmenopausal. It had to be someone with osteoporosis. It had to be someone who was uh, overcoming a recent tragedy. It has to be someone who um, uh, is recovering from cancer. I mean, it could be, I, I don't know what kind of coach you are at this moment, but what is the criteria for someone who's going to work with you? And what was the criteria for this case study? And then you wrap it all up and show the conclusion. And the conclusion is a summary of everything and then also the reveal, which we spoke about on the previous slide. You will likely also want to do some type of video interview with this client in the case study as well. Why? Because people like it and people want to connect and people want to understand. And hearing someone interviewed always helps a lot. That's why they always have that on those types of mystery shows. And in conclusion, you will want to tell the reader, the viewer, of the case study that they can be next. They need to commit to the process. And it's always important to tell the people what to do next because they want to be told what to do next because they don't know what to do next unless they're told. And if they don't do anything, they won't take action. You don't get the customer. They don't get the result. You don't get the revenue. And they're not happy. So you need to tell them. What is the next step? You've read the case study. You saw that Joe Schmo is as happy as can be now and his life's wonderful and, you know, sailed off into the sunset and everything's great. So you're next. What do you do? The process begins with blank. So what's blank? What does the person who's watching, reading, or learning about this case study need to do next? The process begins with making a call, emailing, taking a quiz, filling out a form, etc. Tell them what they need to do next. This is vital. Finally, number three, and our final one, is to think of this. It's not about you, the coach. It's about them. It's always about them, and it always has been. So in your messaging, focus on the you in all your messaging. What do I mean by that? People always want to know what's in it for me. They always have and they always will, period. When you are communicating your offer, avoid language such as, hey, everyone, or people will want to know because you are not speaking to everyone and you're only really speaking to one person, aren't you? Even though many people will see it, they're having an individual experience. Instead, say or write things such as, you will want to learn, or you are about to discover. Think about it like this. Regardless how many times people are reading, listening, or watching your message, People are only perceiving it from their solo, individual, and highly personalized perspective. That's always the way it's been. It's always the way it will be. Before the popularization of podcast, the marketing saying was something along these lines. People are tuned in to radio station WIIFM, which is what's in it for me. Because everyone wants to be a big deal and everyone's focused on themselves and that's just human nature. So you need to say words such as you. When you read the following, you will discover when you enroll, after you graduate, when you complete the process, things like that. Very important. 
when you imply, oh, I'm, I'm, let me start over here. <laughs> when you apply the simple, effective, and free methods of getting new coaching clients, your business will be very successful. You will learn these methods in detail as part of the online coach certification and business system, which there is an opportunity for you to get that for free. So if you're watching this on YouTube or you're seeing it on another social media uh, uh, network, click over and get the link to the Spencer Institute online coach certification and business system and learn about how you can get it for free. But you will learn all the things that we've spoken about and a lot more in detail as part of that program. So in conclusion, now you should be motivated and excited about the opportunities that await you. That makes sense. You have free options to get more clients fast. What I just showed you doesn't cost anything. It takes a little bit of creativity and your time. The only potential cost was would be if you transcribed uh, the uh, case study interview or the other regular interview. Although I'd be willing to bet if you did a Google search for free online transcription software, I bet there are some demo models that you could use or get a free trial. So give it a try, see what happens. Please remember this. We at Spencer Institute and Nesta are going to guide you each step of the way to ensure your thriving career and financial success. Of course, it's important to be a highly educated and qualified and certified coach. It's critical. You have to show that you've done the work and you're willing to do what it takes to have the knowledge and skill set to provide the service for your clients. We want you to have a thriving career and financial success because that means you're going to have longevity. That means you'll be able to take care of yourself. You'll be able to take care of your family. You'll be able to invest for the future. And you're going to be there for a long term to be able to help your clients when they need more help, when they return, and for your future clients as well. And we're with you every step of the way. What's your next step? If you are new to the coaching industry, you'll want to earn your certifications with Spencer Institute. You'll need these professional credentials to reach the top. We're accredited, accepted, recognized, and affordable. So now it's your turn. Nesta and Spencer Institute have dozens of coaching and training certifications that will help you build your career in a wide range of niches, and many of them stack together really nicely to round out your education with specific skill sets. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. We wish you the best, and we're here for you every step of the way. So go here right now. If you're not here already, depending on where you're watching this video, spencerinstitute.com.